That's a good point. Does IWM generally seem like a good uh, strangle vehicle? Seems like it's moving. Yeah, IWM, well, really the whole market has been moving here lately, but IWM may be more so than the ES and the, uh, the NQ because uh, the Russell had a lot of the uh, financial uh, bank banking stocks, especially in it, and the financial sector really moved around a lot after the election. So that affected the Russell. Does it seem like a good strangle vehicle? I don't know about it being a good strangle vehicle as like you do it all the time and, you know, it... it is it going to have any kind of positive expectancy over time? I doubt it because just like the uh, S&P and the uh, NASDAQ, the Russell tends to drift higher over time. So doing a, a neutral trade like a strangle, I don't know if you're going to really have a positive expectancy. Let's run a back test. Let me go into the Tasty platform. And let me go find uh, IWM here and their list. Oh, come on, IWM. Let's do short strangle and yeah we'll just uh, do the standard tasty strangle here 16 deltas on each side 45 days let's do it uh, let's put them on every Friday limit the number of active trades yeah sure why not that way we don't have a million of these things on affecting the PL. exit at a specific DTE so 21 days and we have to take profit at 50% yeah this is kind of the standard Tasty trade strangle. Let's run it. Now it did that very, very fast. So something was not right there. How many trades did it examine? I it examined 45 trades. So, but still, it did that so fast. Uh, time frame I only did 12 months. I knew something was weird there. Let's do a much more reasonable time frame. So, at least a few years, past five years. Okay, this will be. Yeah. And now it takes a few seconds to actually run it. I knew that back test was too quick. Something wasn't right. Overall, though, in the last five years, well, I was going to say the strangles did look like they were somewhat profitable. Not great, but yeah, they, they made a little money. There was one dip right here that was really nasty. What was that? Uh, December of last year, 2023. There was some something happened there where your PL really dipped. Obviously, COVID. Uh, we call it the beginning of COVID in that five year period, too. But for the most part, they did okay. I wouldn't say this is a great trade as far as, you know, this wouldn't be like a core strategy. If you want to put on strangles in IWM every now and then, especially if you need a, a trade, but you don't want to put on any long deltas or you don't want to put on any short deltas, you need to put on a trade, but you don't want to touch your deltas at all. A delta neutral trade like a strangle in IWM, I guess, would work. We go to the details. Uh, you won 75% of the time. That's pretty good. On a 16 delta strangle on each side, you'd expect the win rate to be 68%. You won 74%. That's nice. And there's a little bit of an edge there. Average profit and loss per trade, about nine bucks per trade. So, not a great return, really. But it was a little profitable, slightly profitable. What was the max drawdown? Let's see, what was the biggest loss? Does it tell me? Yeah, maybe it told it on this page. Uh, the biggest loss was here. COVID, you lost uh, more than $11,000. Now, you know what? Realistically, I'm not sure you would have really lost $11,000 on a strangle in COVID. This assumes you put on a strangle and you did nothing with it. No management of any kind, no rolling, no closing, you know, no stop losses, obviously. You just put on a strangle and however it happened, it, you know, it happened, which is fine. That's the only way to really do the back test. It can't really take management <laughs> into account as far as rolling. Uh, it's just not something that the back test could handle. But I'm not sure you would have ever really taken an $11,000 loss. You might have lost a few thousand, but that's a pretty big loss. And that obviously is uh, affecting that profit per loss uh, per trade there. Yeah, that's very interesting. Need to use the back testing tool more. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you some other stuff here in just a second in that back test. Because we'll run a couple of other things. If I go back to the back testing real quick, IWM, so we saw the strangles. The strangles did have a little bit of positive expectancy. They weren't horrible. They weren't great, though. This is not something, again, that I would do as like a core strategy. Like all I ever do is sell strangles in IWM. I don't think it's, it's not that great, right? But let's do my kind of trade. 
Why kind of trade? Let's sell a 15 delta put 60 DTE. That's because those are numbers I often use. 60 DTE, we take it off at 50% or 21 DTE. Once again, we're going to sell a put every Friday. Without even really looking at the numbers, you can tell the orange line, this is a much nicer line. It just tends to go up. Let's see where it ends up. So average profit and loss per trade instead of like nine bucks on the string was 38 bucks on just the put. Uh, max drawdown, $13,000 again on COVID. I seriously doubt you would have sold a put and just did nothing with it through COVID. You would have tried to defend it in some way. So I don't, again, the back test is the back test. There's nothing you can do about that. But in real life, I don't think anybody would have taken that max loss. I think that's a little over-exaggerated. Uh, details. You put on 237 of those 15 Delta short puts. You won on 216 of them. That is insanely good. Because a 15 Delta short put, what is what do you think your win rate should be on a 15 Delta short put? Just quick, you know, in your head calculation, you would think 15 Deltas, I should win 85% of the time. You actually won 91% of the time. You did six percentage points better than what you really thought you should. Really what those options are priced at, a 15 Delta put is priced at you winning 85% of the time, but you actually won 91% of the time. So that's positive expectancy. You're doing better than what those options were really priced for you to do. Average days in the trade at 60 DTE, we're only averaging 19 days per trade, meaning not only are we winning most of the time, we're winning quick. We're in and out of these things on average 19 days. So a lot of people ask about why I put on 60 DTE trades a lot, because a lot of people, man, I want to do weekly trades. I only want to be in something a week, maybe two weeks. Well, just because you put on a trade at 60 DTE doesn't mean you're in it for 60 days. On my short puts, I bet I'm not in most of my short puts longer than a week, maybe a week and a half, right? You can see in this case, 19 days on the IWM here. That's about right. Yeah. A little longer than two weeks in this case. That's fantastic, right? So why not do that all the time? Don't want to put on too many long deltas, though. So every now and then, you know, you want to put on a strangle, that's fine. Or here's another thing you could do. Since we know the puts work, we know the strangle wasn't bad. You know, the call works against the put a little bit. You know, you could do a strangle, but instead of one put, how about two puts? Just to give yourself a little bit more long delta. Let's do that. Two puts, one call, 15 delta, 60 DTE. Take it off at 21 DTE or 50% max profit, putting them on every Friday. So you're kind of splitting the difference here. It's not going to be quite as great as just the short put by itself, but it's not going to be quite as bad as just the strangle by itself. Now, now you got essentially one strangle and an additional naked put. Profit per trade, $58. Now again, this is a bigger trade because we did two puts, one call, so we got more options in this trade. Uh, also a bigger max loss, $32,000 again. COVID details. Took 222 trades, trades with profit, 191. We won 86% of the time on these combination strangles here. Or some people might call it a ratio strangle. So two to one, two puts versus one call. But yeah, I could play with this back testing all day. Yeah, we could sit here and back test stuff all day. One little back test I'm going to run, just because I think it's very important to drive this point home is you know, every now and then you find trades that just work. We know bullish strategies in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ and also IWM being an index product, they just work because the index products, they just go higher. We know they work. We know selling puts in the ES or the SPY just work. We know selling put credit spreads in the ES or the SPY, they just work. We know long term, you will win if you just do that over and over again and manage your risks appropriately. You can't take so much risk that the occasional bad event puts you out of the game. You got to make sure that you're doing it at a level where you're not risking blowing up your account. But as long as you do it safely and just do it over and over again, you're guaranteed to make money. So I want to show you this example here. Let's go run the back test. New back test. Let's do it in SPY. Because we got a little bit more data in SPY, we can go back a number of years. But I'm just going to stick to the five year uh, for now. 
we may go back further, but I'm going to do one contract. I'm going to go a little further out of the money for this example. I'm going to do a 10 delta put at 60 DTE. Same uh, as far as uh, early management, 50% uh, 21 DTE, doing them every Friday. What do you think the win percentage is before it comes out? Type it in the chat. 10 delta puts. What's my win percentage going to be? Mm -hmm. Let's see who predicts this right. 92%. Wow, so 10%. The 10 delta put should win 90%. You think it's going to do a little better, 92%. I don't know. I haven't looked at the number yet. Yeah, Don says over 90%. Yeah, I would think it would be over 90%. Now, let's see. Well, let's go back. Uh, profit and loss, obviously, short puts and spy, they just work. We already know all the numbers are going to look good. But let's see the win percentage. 93.8%. Well, oh, essentially, I didn't win 90% of the time. I won 94% of the time. We took 242 trades and we profited on 227 of the 242 trades. So out of 242 trades, we lost on 15 trades. Three of them were right here in the COVID crash. I'm not sure necessarily during COVID you would have been selling puts, but again, it's a back test. So realistically, you probably would have sold the first uh, short put and spy, lost your ass on it, and you wouldn't have sold the next two, <laughs> probably. So, uh, but, you know, again, it's a back test. But you pretty much win like 94, 95% the, on a 10 delta put, and that was 60 DTE. Now, sometimes I, you know, on the ES, and you guys see this when I do MES, a lot of times I'll go sell my... Uh, puts a little further out in time. I'll go to 90 DTE on the futures products like ES, MES. I'll do the same thing in SPY because this is interesting. Let's see what happens when I add a little bit of time to this 10 delta put. Let's do it at 90 DTE. You like that, uh, that line there? It is just a straight line, right? Just a very smooth line. Compared to a buy and hold strategy of you hold the stock, you know, it's up and down, up and down, up and down, you know, this short put strategy, very consistent. All right, details. 212 trades, 206 with profits. And if we ignore COVID, now this is really interesting. If we ignore COVID, because I'm not sure you would have sold, especially these last three puts during the COVID crash, that first one hurt you so bad, you probably would have stopped selling puts for a little while. Really, you only lost on two trades the rest of this five-year period. You won 97% of the time on a 10 delta put at 90 DTE. Average uh, profit loss per trade, you made $106 per trade. Yeah, James, yeah, crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. This is one of the things that a lot of like the financial gurus, like the trading gurus on YouTube and TikTok, they, they just don't show people this kind of stuff. Like we all know the buy and hold strategy of just buying and holding SPY works, right? Because SPY, you don't know what it's going to do short term, but in the long run, it's going to go up. You know, if you can hold it a number of years, it's going to go up. Same thing with options. If you can constantly trade bullish strategies on SPY over and over again for a number of years, it's going to go up. It's the exact same principle. You just have to make sure that you do it in a responsible enough way. You never take some crazy loss that's going to, you know, cripple your account. So you got to manage your risk doing this. But that's it. That really is the secret. Manage your risk and then do the things that you know are going to make money over time.